Today, we're gonna to try to blog like Seth Godin with artificial intelligence. I'm gonna to navigate to my Riku dashboard and I'm gonna go into the playground. So I'm gonna say what we're gonna to do today and we're gonna blog like Seth Godin. And I need to decide what I actually need to give it. And I've got a subject. I figure I need a subject. What you notice is that he does a sentence, invent a new holiday. And then he begins talking about that sentence. So this isn't like SEO blogging or anything like that. By the way, Seth Godin, author, famous marketer, absolutely just quite amazing as a marketer. You probably know that. His blog, he's consistent. Every single day, he does one of these very short posts. And I think it's absolutely perfect to emulate with AI, even though it kind of defeats the purpose as far as he's being concise and to the point and just testing a bunch of different ideas and things. So it's a creative process for him. And with this AI, we're almost not doing that, if that makes any sense. However, what we are doing, and this is one of the reasons I want to do this exercise, what we are doing is being succinct with what we're actually talking about. On schedule, we get a huge benefit from making a simple commitment. Don't miss deadlines. So like here, we're talking about on schedule, like being on time, correct? So what I'm actually looking for out of this article is like this blog here, in or out. Often overlooked is how uncomfortable it is to sit on a fence. Get in or get out. Wasting time sitting on a fence wastes more time and emotion than you'd expend committing to something. This is that Gary V concept of half pregnant. A lot of companies have to go through the same old thing and you get into what I call the half pregnant zone. And that's what I want to talk about. Do not get caught half pregnant. If you want to embrace the tools that are out there today, you've got to just go do it. There should be no excuses. You can't be half pregnant. I'm going to get started today and we're going to take a phrase. Maybe we'll go with instead of subject, I'll leave it at subject for now. We're just going to go with in or out. We're going to go with a one prompt intro. And then for our output, I'm going to paste it underneath the numbers and I'm gonna give it three more numbers. I'm gonna start with three of these. So I'm gonna copy and paste the format and then we're gonna go and we're gonna just pick a couple more. That one was quite short. So maybe here we'll come in with limitless, which is about infinity, which is a great idea, but unless you're doing the math, it's mostly an idea. And I'm gonna use this as our second prompt. He doesn't claim that every day is remarkable. And this would be a lot better if we fed it three remarkable ones. But for today's exercise, we're just going to feed it something. The thing about a gold rush, it's not the gold, it's the rush that changes the way people behave. I actually like that. Let's do that one there. So let's get started testing it. I'm going to keep my temperature at 0.75. What we'll see over here is we can adjust the output tokens based on what we're actually expecting to get out. So let's see how many words he's using. It looks like he's using about 94 words. So let's take, let's just do 400 output tokens if it'll let us. Let's go ahead and try 400. In or out, limitless, the thing about a gold rush. Those are our three examples. Let's take one of his ideas and we'll just do one on the asking price and we'll see what it spits out. You know that thing you want? The thing you think that is just out of reach, but you can feel it just beyond your grasp? The asking price is always more than the thing itself. When you're determined to get something, the asking price becomes irrelevant. You find a way to pay it. Remember that the next time you want something big and you're tempted to give up, the asking price is always more than the thing itself. We just wrote like Seth Godin. All right, let's read his. The asking price. The asking price is true, but it's also an illusion. If you're offered a job and negotiate a raise of 10% over what was originally offered, that's good, but it has nothing at all to do with what you're actually worth. If you buy a house for 15% over asking price, it doesn't mean you overpaid. The asking price is a signal, a way to message expectations and begin a negotiation. It's simply a guess about the future made by the person who goes first. It can anchor our thinking, but if we're not careful, it can be an anchor that also drags us down. So his is better than mine, right? My, my AI output. However, mine was pretty good. Better than I could write. You know, I, it's a way of thinking. So I don't know if maybe it's just I'm not as creative as Seth Godin or perhaps, you know, in fact, that's a negative statement. We're going to revise that right this second. It's not that. It's that I'm not blogging every single day. I'm not doing the work. So let's do one on negotiating and see what the Seth Godin inspired AI has to say. 
Negotiating is all about finding the overlap between what we want and what the other person wants. It's not about finding a way to get them to do what we want. It's about finding a way for both parties to end up better off than they were before. Sometimes that means compromising, but it doesn't always mean giving in. It can also mean standing firm on what's important to us and being willing to walk away if we can't find common ground. That is some pretty good advice on negotiating. How about marketing? Marketing is a strange and nebulous thing. It's the art of convincing people to do something they may not have otherwise done. It's the process of getting someone to see things in a new way. It's also a science though. There are principles and frameworks that can be followed. And if you understand how people think and how to reach them, you can do some amazing things. Have I absolutely cracked the code here? I can give it a single word and I can get some very good outputs. We might as well end on sales. And I'll tell you about a sale that Riku is having right now on AppSumo, lifetime deal $49. Link in the description, support the channel. The salesman is the person who helps us understand what we want. He's the one who helps us see our desires in a new way, who makes it possible for us to dream about what could be. He's not always right, but he's always optimistic. And that's a good thing. That's actually pretty good right there. I'm going to do one more on sales because it wasn't quite the angle I was going for. Sales is a process about finding someone who wants what you have. It's not about convincing them that they need it or that they should want it. It's about understanding their needs and then giving them what they want. It's a process of discovery and it starts with listening. This is fantastic. One word and I'm generating some insane outputs, I think at least. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Give this video a like if it brought you any value. My name is Scott with AI Profits and I'll see you in the next one.